Okay, I'm gonna be trying the Guards Up Daily Mineral Sunscreen SPF 35 from Thirst. Today I'm testing out the Simwa Mineral Sunscreen. I have their face and body lotion and I also have their gentle mineral sunscreen. Today I'll be trying the Elta MD UV Elements Boss Spectrum one. My first time ever trying a tinted sunscreen. I have combination skin, but I tend to use products that are for dry skin because I live in Los Angeles. I have oily combination skin. I'm oily in my teen zone and pretty normal on the perimeter of my face. I have like oily combination skin with a lot of hyperpigmentation and acne. Welcome back. We have another Derm Reacts video, and I'm so excited because we have Dr. Laura Scott with us. She's a board certified dermatologist in Miami, Florida, and the topic today is sunscreen for darker skin tones. Hi, Laura. Hi, Susan. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for joining us. I'm really excited about this topic. It's something that we get requests on all the time. I am so excited to be here. This is something that is very near and dear to my heart, not only as a dermatologist, but a dermatologist practicing in Miami where sun is just inescapable. So I guess the most important thing first is to just go over the basics of sunscreen. Why do people need sunscreen? What SPF they need? Just all of the stuff that some people don't really understand. Yeah, so we're gonna talk, I think, a lot more about why certain darker skin tones need sunscreen. But in general, sunscreen really protects us from the sun. And that's because as much as we love the sun, as much as it's good for us, getting too much sun can actually lead to skin cancer and it can also lead to advanced aging. And so when we start to look at older skin and the signs of aging, like wrinkles, dark spots, actually the biggest contributor of that is not actually your age, it's how much sun you've gotten in your life. And so SPF plays a big role in protecting us from that, the skin cancer, and really just taking care of our skin. As far as daily sunscreen, I think a lot of people, you know, they know that they should be wearing their sunscreen when they go to the beach. They're not so aware of the fact that you should be wearing it daily, even if you're just getting into your car, going to work, coming back home, because we're still getting exposed and those sun rays are still having their effect, even, you know, if you're not hanging out at the beach or outside really soaking up the sun. For most patients, I like to recommend at least an SPF 30 for daily use. If you're gonna be outside longer, soccer game, beach, something like that, then higher normally is better. And that's just because we sort of suck at reapplying sunscreens. And so an SPF 100 actually doesn't provide a ton more protection versus say an SPF 40 or 50, but it does when we start looking at how often people reapply. We're not that good at reapplying. All right, so then that leads to a really common question also, and that's whether you prefer mineral sunscreen or chemical sunscreen. <laughs> yes, I get this question all the time. And I would say that really my most honest answer and what I tell my patients is that my preference is the sunscreen you're actually going to use. Now, when we get into the actual technicalities, my true favorites are mineral sunscreens. And that's for a few reasons. For one, there is some data that the chemicals in sunscreen, and of course that word chemicals always like <laughs> irritates me a tiny bit because everything is chemicals, right? Water is H2O. But the chemical sunscreens, there is some evidence that they may have endocrine disrupting effects. We just don't know with certainty that they're as safe as they should be. And we do know that some of them can get absorbed in the bloodstream. And so that is one thing that always makes me, you know, right now as a pregnant woman, I'm actually choosing to use my only mineral sunscreen. Typically for my face sunscreen, when I'm not pregnant, I still use one that's mixed with chemical. So it's, it's truly not, you know, I don't want to scare people, but that is one of those things that I'm conscious of. And that I think my patients should be aware of too, so that they can be empowered to make the right decision for them. The mineral sunscreens provide superior protection. They provide more protection against the visible light, which I had talked about earlier. Um, and they just, in general, because they just sit on the skin and sort of block the rays from penetrating, they're just a lot more inert. They don't really do anything other than protect your skin. I guess the one, one real big benefit of chemical sunscreens is that they just feel nicer and they tend to not leave as much of a white cast, right? Absolutely. So that's that's really the biggest issue. And that's, you know, when we get into the talks about sunscreens for darker skin tones, the chemical sunscreens are almost always more clear because those chemical formulations are clear. The mineral formulations are truly based from crushed up minerals. So crushed up zinc oxide, crushed up titanium dioxide. And that's why they often leave 
that, you know, gray cast, sometimes in darker skin tones, it can even leave like this purplish look. And people want clear formulations, but it's just not physically possible based on how those mineral formulations work. I mean, you gotta think about crushing up rocks. That's, that's right. literally what's on our face protecting us. So the tinted mineral formulations tend to be a little bit better and easier to blend. And then there's mixed formulations. So let's talk about sunscreen for darker skin tones. My husband is Indian and this mm -hmm. is a constant battle in our household. I actually got him to start using a, a moisturizer with SPF 30 and I feel like that's a big win for me. But you know, I think, you know, he's kind of growing up with this notion that he doesn't burn or he doesn't, you know, he doesn't get skin cancer from the sun. So, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like this is, this is probably a pretty common belief and I'd love yes. to hear your thoughts on that. It's so common. And I hear it all the time. One of my closest colleagues is Indian and she hears it, you know, culturally from all of her family. I'm half Puerto Rican. And even on that side, you know, they don't really believe in sunscreens. They, they tan, but they like the tan. And they're like, I don't want, you know, I want my tan. What are you talking about? Yep. Um, and then I'm, I'm half black as well, half African-American. And that side, for sure, you know, they're like, we don't need sunscreen and it just, it doesn't even look good on us. It doesn't help us. We don't get skin cancer. And to that, you know, there's always a ton of education to be done. And that's why I'm so glad that we can be on a platform like this to talk a little bit about them because we absolutely can get skin cancers. And it's hard because we can identify as one thing culturally, we can identify as one race, but really our skin tones are still so vastly different. And so even though I identify as black, I have a much higher risk of skin cancer than my best friend who identifies as black, who's a little bit darker skin than me. So the melanin does provide some protection and that's why we don't burn as easily, but we absolutely can burn. <laughs> we absolutely can get skin cancer. And you know, it's hard. We don't actually have the data that is a slam dunk suggesting that all of our skin cancers are UV related. And that's one area where we're missing some research. Traditionally, skin of color populations have been left out of a lot of the clinical research. And so that's one thing we're working on now to get more research to say that yes, these are all UV related. Yes, sunscreen would, would help prevent that because quite honestly, we don't have the data in our darker skin populations, but we do know we can get skin cancer. The, the best way to reduce those rates or at least reduce the disparities that we see is to increase awareness. So for you guys to know that we can get skin cancers and then come see a dermatologist sooner rather than later. And you know what, even for the vanity reasons, right? Hyperpigmentation, <laughs> this is something that, this is something that, you know, we have to be aware of. I, I feel like UV rays can really make hyperpigmentation so much worse. Absolutely. So this is where I win most of my patients over. You know, I, honestly, I don't always win them over in the sunscreen argument when we're talking skin cancers and things like that, which honestly, I'm okay. As long as you wear sunscreen, that's what I care about. <laughs> and whether or not it's for vanity yep. reasons or not, because, you know, whatever, whatever it takes <laughs> it makes me happy. All right, so let's get into the sunscreens that we sent out to three of our viewers. We sent three different brands. I think they're all pretty much mineral sunscreens, but I wanted to get your thoughts first on what you think of these sunscreens. These are all awesome sunscreens. So I'll say that you really can't pick one. There's no bad one in this group, but like everything else in skincare, so much of it has to do with understanding your own skin type and what you want from a sunscreen. I guess no particular order, but we can start with my personal favorite, which is the Alta MD UV Elements Tinted. This is one that I personally use and that I recommend in the office all the time. As a dermatologist, I really need something in my toolkit that I can depend on for every single patient. And so I'm a little bit biased because in my office, I see patients with a lot of skin problems, right? They come in with acne, they come in with rosacea, they may come in with severe eczema. And so I really have to be careful and I have to have a dependable sunscreen. And that's what this one is for me. It's very light but still hydrating, so it works in Miami. It doesn't leave that gray cast. Of course, with almost all of these mineral formulations, you do have to wait a few minutes. I usually tell my patients, you know, wait 10 minutes. When they first put it on in the morning, they'll see a little bit of that gray cast and be like, oh, Dr. Scott just gave me another one of these sunscreens like everybody else. But then on their drive to work, they'll see, you know, actually, I don't see this anymore. And so really, it is a nice transparent option. And it just, it's just so nice. It doesn't, doesn't do anything yeah. bad to your skin. It's, it's nice and trusted. 
Yeah, definitely. I feel like Elta MD just really comes through for everybody. Whenever you can't decide a sunscreen for somebody, it's like, just get an Elta MD sunscreen. Exactly. It's, it's just a really dependable, reliable option. And even their chemical mixed mixed one, which I know we're not talking about, is another one of my favorites for, for darker skin tones because it's just, it's even more clear. So this is the one that I love the most that, that comes personally recommended from me. The Semwa was, was new to me. This one is so nice. And my kids have already stolen the stick option that you guys sent over. <laughs> it's probably the nicest it. stick formulation that we've, that we've used yet. Very nice. And I would recommend it for the people who are not acne prone or not rosacea prone. And that's only because it does have a few ingredients in here, particularly the shea butter and some of the fruit extracts that can either flare acne or that can flare otherwise sensitive skin. So that's the only, you know, drawback to this one, but otherwise it feels really nice going on. For me personally, this would be like a perfect body option. Or again, if you're somebody without any skin issues and who doesn't really deal with, you know, having the risk of breakouts, this is a really, really nice one. The Verse one, I am very surprised by. I think this actually, I'm, I'm really glad you guys sent it over because it might be a new one I recommend for my patients who are even more on a budget because the Elta MD can, can get pricey as it, as it adds up. Mm -hmm. But this one is very nice. It's got over 15% zinc oxide. It's tinted, so when you compare the Elta MD and the Versed, they actually look pretty similar when you have both of them on your hand. You know, I look through all the ingredients. It doesn't have anything that would concern me for flaring acne, for flaring eczema, anything like that. So I think this would be a really nice option too. I have one more question before we look at the reviews that we got from our viewers. How much sunscreen should you technically be using on your face? That's a great question. I guess face, like neck, chest. <laughs> exactly, like face and neck, chest. So that's one of the things that I actually like about the l d is that because it's in a pump, it's very easy to stay consistent with how much you're using. And so for my patients, I tend to say really just one pump for the face, but of course we want to not forget our neck too. So two pumps total would be how much you would need to cover the face and neck. All right, so let's take a look at what Alice, Cassandra, and Kamisha have to say about these sunscreens. The first sunscreen we're looking at is the Elta MD UV Elements Tinted Broad Spectrum SPF 44. I'm gonna be trying the Elta MD UV Elements SPF 44. It's coming out with a nice tint, which is exciting because usually when they come out white, even when they say they're transparent, they usually leave kind of like this white residue on my skin, which I don't love. I would say the texture is very hydrating and very milky, if it's a texture. Goes on the skin with a slight, you know, tint and it looks kind of like it has a white character. As I massage it in, it is going away. Let's see how this goes on. Tinted products. <laughs> um, it doesn't feel super greasy, but as you can see, it looks a little white. <laughs> the more you work it in, the better it gets. This goes on really smooth. That's really nice. I feel like this sunscreen is not transparent. I do see it on my skin the slightest bit just because I know what my skin looks like. So I feel like a little bit washed out, but the consistency and the way it feels on my skin is actually really pleasant. It doesn't feel heavy. It's leaving a little bit of a white pass, but I don't hate it. Like I'd feel okay going on and putting on my makeup or just going about my day if I'm not wearing makeup. It does have a slight cast to it. For someone with my complexion, I wouldn't you know, recommend this just cause you will have too much massage it in, but I would say people a little lighter than me on the darker complexion would, you know, love this. But after some massaging in, it seems to be going down. I will probably assume that as the day continue on, it will, you know, fade. I would highly recommend this one. I think this is really nice. I would recommend this if you are in a lighter skin category than me. Um, 
for my darker girls? I don't know. I don't think so. I still see kind of like a, a haze and you can kind of see it on my eyebrows too. So I don't know that I would recommend this for anyone my complexion or darker. Next up, we have two sunscreens from Samoa. So we split them up. One of them is the Gentle Mineral Sunscreen and that's SPF 30. And one is the Sunshine Mineral Sunscreen and that's SPF 45. Today I'm testing out the Simwa Mineral Sunscreen. I have their face and body lotion. I'm just gonna take a bit. And it says to apply it liberally. So this feels a little greasy. So that worries me a little bit because I tend to be oily in my take zone. So I don't know that that would work throughout the day. It's not leaving like a white cast or anything. So if you're my skin tone, or darker, it would work quite well for you. I'm gonna use the Same Moi Gentle Mineral Sunscreen Lotion, SPF 30. Okay, it's coming out white, so I'm already a little nervous. It feels nicer here. It has a little fragrance to it, and as you can see, it obviously has a white care to it. This sunscreen has surprised me with how transparent it goes. I don't feel like I have that ghost, ghost white thing going on, but I do notice that it is quite greasy. The white cast does go away a little bit, but you can still feel the tint. But as far as color, I think this is amazing. I'm, I'm quite surprised. This is quite transparent. So it's gonna be just a preference of how you like the feel of your skin when you've got sunscreen on. Overall, it did go in well, but still has like a slight gray cast to my face. And last is the Burst Guards Up Mineral Sunscreen. That's SPF 35. Today I'm testing out a mineral sunscreen from the company called First. It is their Guards Up Daily Mineral Sunscreen broad spectrum SPF 35. Already I like that it's tinted, uh, but it is a light tint and sometimes that doesn't do much of anything. So I'm interested to see what happens. Oh, it's really smooth going on. It feels kind of matte to the touch, which is kind of okay. And it seems to be really going on the skin pretty quickly. It's not leaving like a white cast. I like the texture, it does blend in well. Wow, that color is great. I feel like the sunscreen actually gives me a nice glow, but it doesn't make me shiny and it's not matte. It absorbed into the skin pretty quickly, it's not greasy. I would totally recommend this product to anybody that's my skin tone or darker. Overall, it has no white cares and it blended real well. I really love this, I would absolutely recommend this. All right, so that was sunscreen for darker skin tones. I was really excited to see that everybody loved the Verst. It's pretty. It's a pretty consistent message. I personally do also love the Elta MD. And the same Moi was a very, you know, that's an exciting brand that I'm just starting to get to know too. So I love seeing all of this. I know that you guys are constantly asking what certain sunscreens look like on darker skin tones. So I hope this was super helpful. Dr. Scott, it was so wonderful to have you join me on this video. It was such a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for having me. If you guys wanna watch other videos on sunscreens, I'll leave them below in the description box. You'll have links to them. We also have our private Facebook group. I'm on Instagram at Susan Yara. Follow Dr. Scott. She is so adorable on Instagram right now with her beautiful family and I can't wait to see her lovely baby. Thank you guys so much and we'll talk to you soon.